Hi there, material scientists and tribologists. Welcome to VDMAT. Our last speaker today is a cool guy I met at the Gordon Research Conference in 2018. Tomasz Babushka is not only a bright scientist, but he's also really fun to hang out with. He's a fourth-year PhD candidate at Lehigh University, currently studying materials tribology with a focus in solid lubricants for space. He does his research at Florida State University in Brandon Crick's group, and he worked in the tribology group at Sandia National Lab for eight years. This guy already has his name on a truckload of papers and is extremely versatile. Today's talk will be on space lubricants. Just stand by for this short message from MDPI Coatings. Coatings is a peer-reviewed journal of coatings and surface engineering published online by MDPI on a monthly basis. Hello everyone, and welcome to my talk today at this uh, Vivimat uh, 2021 Materials Tribology Workshop. Today I'll be talking about some of our work on solid lubricants for uh, space applications and our efforts to understand the effects of uh, solid lubricant microstructure and environment on the friction of uh, MOS2 coatings. Uh, this is some collaborative work with uh, colleagues such as John Curry, Mike Duggar, Nick Archive, and Mike Chandros at Sandia National Labs Mechanics of Materials and Tribology Laboratory, along with uh, my advisor Brandon Crick and our fellow grad students Tomas Greitak and Kylie Van Meter uh, at Florida State University. Before we can develop an ideal solid lubricant for space applications, we must first understand the different stages coating will go through during its lifetime. The first being deposition of a coating and assembly of a coated component into its final mechanism. Uh, after the satellite is uh, completely assembled, typically it is stored in the terrestrial environment uh, with exposure to water and oxygen for some prolonged period of time, which can cause uh, oxidation or aging uh, and degrade the friction and wear properties over time. The third stage is the launch and deployment of the satellite in the space environment. Uh, and MOS2 coatings in particular typically have this run-in behavior to low friction where the first cycle is significantly higher than the steady state. And obviously the last stage a coating must go through is the actual uh, operation in the space environment, which is quite harsh due to exposure to radiation, uh, ultra high vacuum, varying temperatures, and reactive species such as atomic oxygen. For example, Professor Brandon Crick in 2009 uh, actually flew uh, coatings in the space environment, and we can see that before flight, we had this nice MOS2 PVD coating, while after flight, the harsh space environment uh, caused severe degradation and uh, decreased the tribological performance. Now, uh, now that we know all the uh, stages a coating must go through, we know that the ideal solid lubricant must survive prolonged storage prior to launch. It must have in, uh, initially low friction during the launch and deployment phase, and it must not degrade or have varying properties while operating in the space environment. MOS2 coatings can be deposited through a variety of techniques. The first and maybe most common technique as different physical vapor deposition techniques such as DC or RF magnetron sputtering, which typically form coatings that are amorphous or nano, very nanocrystalline. Um, the benefits of PVD techniques is that you can have very tight dimensional tolerances. Coating thicknesses are typically a few hundred nanometers to a micron thick, and you can have control over the composition and morphology and create high purity coatings. Uh, this technique is also one of the only techniques where you can create composites uh, adding constituents such as nickel, tie gold, or antimony trioxide. Now the main drawback of PVD coatings is that there can be significant batch-to-batch -batch variation and they can be susceptible to oxidation and degradation, specifically in the pre-flight storage uh, phase of a coating's lifetime. And for this reason, a lot of PVD coatings are not actually uh, flight qualified. Now the other uh, deposition technique that is common, commonly used are mechanical burnishing or nitrogen spraying techniques, which is simply 
uh, MOS2 powder put into a nitrogen jet that is uh, sprayed up to the surface of a sample, uh, which is essentially burnishing it on. These coatings have uh, much different coating morphologies than PVD techniques. Uh, they typically are much thinner uh, and are typically uh, have larger basally oriented crystallites. Now the benefits of this technique is that they can, it's easy to coat complex geometries and this basal orientation is favorable for initial friction and oxidation resistance. The major drawback of this technique is that there's really limited control over thickness and coverage. We can see here in this EDS image uh, where the purple is MOS2, we can see how um, uneven the coverage is. Additionally, these coatings typically have poor adhesion uh, and you, don't, you can typically not use adhesion layers. Now, if we look at the various coating morphologies these different deposition techniques create, uh, we can see that for the first uh, coating, a PVD coating, and a specifically a pure MOS2 coating, the bulk of the coating is a nanocrystalline, where the crystallites are lamella-oriented perpendicular to the coating surface. Uh, for a nitrogen sprayed or mechanically burnished coating, we have a much different microstructure and coating morphology with the crystallites or lamella-oriented parallel to the um, uh, coating substrate. Um, these different coating morphologies do behave quite differently depending on the environment they operate in. If we look at friction, average friction traces for both the sprayed and sputtered film and dry nitrogen, we can see that while the steady state uh, friction coefficients are quite similar, the initial uh, friction coefficient of a sprayed film is uh, a little lower than a sputtered coating. And the biggest difference between these two coatings is when you test them in humid air, where a uh, sputtered coating has both an initially uh, higher uh, starting coefficient of friction and steady state compared to a sprayed coating. Now, with PVD coatings, uh, most are not uh, a pure MOS2 coating. And they're typically uh, a composite. Uh, Scharf and Prasad in 2010 looked at a composite MOS2 gold NMO trioxide coating, where the big benefit of a composite is the overall wear life, um, especially in humid air. While both a composite and pure coating behave similarly in dry nitrogen, uh, composites uh, do much better in uh, humid environments. So the key takeaway here is that coating morphology can affect the coating performance, both with uh, overall friction coefficient and wear life, uh, especially depending on the environment they're uh, operating in. Now that we understand how various deposition techniques affect coating, coating morphology uh, and kind of developing that understanding of the first stage of a coating's lifetime, we need to understand how a coating deposited by ver these various techniques would behave uh, in the, the second stage of a coating's lifetime, specifically the pre-flight storage, where coatings can degrade over time due to prolonged uh, exposure to water and oxygen while waiting for launch. A good, a good PVD coating, uh, fresh out of deposition with an amorphous or nanocrystalline microstructure, uh, typically has uh, an increased friction on the first cycle, but can run into a nice low steady state uh, coefficient of friction here with this coating even after three cycles. Now the uh, long-term exposure to the terrestrial environment can significantly degrade the coating uh, with uh, moly trioxide penetrating uh, sometimes deep into the coating uh, and increasing the coefficient of friction of not just the first cycle but also prolong prolonging that run-in period to low friction. A study by Jeff Lentz recently from Aerospace Corporation uh, looked at the uh, aging of MOS2 composite coatings uh, stored in lab air for over four years, where a uh, MOS2 annually trioxide gold coating saw a significant reduction of about 20% in its overall wear life due to aging, uh, and a M MOS2 nickel composite coating saw an even more dramatic decrease in its uh, overall wear life with an 80% reduction uh, due to aging. 
So these kind of known side effects of longer run into low friction, decreased wear life of the coating, and higher initial friction uh, can kind of pose an issue because we initially test this coating uh, in the lab environment uh, to understand its performance, but this pre-launch storage can significantly degrade the friction and wear. So the key question here is, uh, how does coating microstructure, uh, either being uh, made by different techniques and being either nanocrystalline or basally oriented, um, affect oxidation, the oxidation resistance or resistance to aging of MLS2 coatings? Previous work done by John Curry now at Sandia National Labs looked at the oxidation behavior of uh, ordered MLS2 coatings, specifically nitrogen spray coatings and amorphous PVD coatings after exposure to atomic oxygen, which mimics the uh, space environment, and high temperature oxygen, which kind of mimics an uh, aging or the prolonged storage. And what he found is that these ordered MLS2 coatings um, after exposure to high temperature oxygen or atomic oxygen had significantly lower initial friction than their amorphous counter, uh, PVD counterparts, and that the uh, uh, steady state friction coefficient is much lower in humid air uh, for these ordered films, as we kind of talked about earlier. Uh, along with these uh, ordered nitrogen sprayed coatings having a uh, much quicker transition to steady state friction or kind of less cycles to run in than amorphous PVD coatings. And the uh, reason behind this is that this basal orientation for these uh, nitrogen sprayed coatings um, really, uh, really limited uh, oxidation uh, to, the, to the surface, whereas these amorphous coatings allowed for uh, oxides to penetrate much deeper into the coating, especially after exposure to high temperature oxygen. Uh, so this mental model we can now uh, think, uh, think about is that this basal orientation uh, limits uh, oxides to the surface, whereas amorphous PVD coatings allow for uh, oxides to penetrate much deeper into the coating. And uh, really the key takeaway here is that a coating with a basal orientation or crystallites oriented parallel to the substrate um, is much uh, better than having an amorphous or nanocrystalline PVD coating. And this allows for um, the tribological performance to be maintained after uh, prolonged storage or exposure to reactive species uh, in the space environment. So now that we have this sort of mental model about uh, oxidation of MLS2 coatings with very microstructures, we now understand that a uh, sputter PVD deposited coating or a nitrogen sprayed coating offer uh, microstructures that are very different uh, due to basal orientation in the spray deposited coating, which uh, with prolonged exposure or aging to the terrestrial environment uh, affect the degradation of these various microstructures much differently, uh, where the basally oriented coatings are much more superior uh, than these amorphous or nanocrystalline coatings. Uh, the kind of problem with this model is that it doesn't account for uh, any sort of sliding or shear, uh, and they're only for as deposited coatings. But from the literature, we kind of know that sliding, uh, especially on a, a PVD amorphous or nanocrystalline coating, can cause uh, shear-induced reorientation of the uh, near surface, uh, where you get a uh, basally oriented surface layer, surface layer due to sliding. Uh, and if we think about the kind of stages of a coating lifetime, uh, the uh, first step, which is deposition and assembly, uh, coatings are always going to be tested in the lab prior to this uh, second stage of storage or even the launch or deployment phase. So now uh, we can't really study as deposited coatings because the structure on the surface is no longer as deposited. Uh, it actually has this uh, basally oriented layer on a amorphous uh, or nanocrystalline bulk coating. So the key question here is we want to understand how does a slid surface uh, with a different morphology uh, react to oxidation and aging uh, differently. So the new mental model we now need to develop is that uh, this 
the, the first stage of a coating uh, where we're going to uh, test it in the lab environment uh, is going to form uh, this basically oriented surface layer uh, due to shear reorientation and uh, recrystallization where uh, long-term exposure to the terrestrial environment or aging uh, is actually going to limit this oxidation uh, to the near surface. Uh, and kind of the uh, hypothesized benefits of this would be that for a PVD coating, which we saw uh, kind of perform poorly uh, due to aging and uh, atomic oxygen exposure, is now going to uh, actually run it quicker to lower friction, uh, have initially lower friction, and we're going to see that the uh, life of the coating is improved due to this formation of a basally oriented surface layer. So our kind of our hypothesis is that uh, by going through this pre-flight testing, it's actually beneficial for pre uh, preserving uh, the uh, solid lubricant uh, performance uh, by forming this uh, basally oriented surface layer, which will mitigate uh, the penetration of oxid uh, oxides into the coating and really limit it to that near surface. So in order to test this hypothesis, uh, we first need to create what we call a, a raster patch uh, which is essentially a uh, series of wear scars that are staggered upon each other to create a large mecha mechanically sheared area. Uh, typically, uh, individual wear scars are quite small and it can be challenging to test over them after uh, you do any sort of uh, aging or oxidation to the coating. So these larger mechanically sheared areas allow us to come back and test over a already sheared region. Uh, the second step to test this hypothesis uh, is to uh, change the ball and uh, subsequently test over this raster patch or mechanically sheared region uh, so that we can test the performance of the as deposited coating uh, and this mechanically sheared coating uh, pre and post oxidation. So after our initial step of creating a large raster patch in dry nitrogen, our second step is going to be to uh, trace over this raster patch also in dry nitrogen. Uh, we can see the friction trace of cycle one um, shown here in the plot on the left. And what we can see is that the behavior of the as deposited coating, which uh, had undergone no mechanical shear, uh, is uh, quite different than the uh, raster region. If we look at the average friction of just the uh, as deposited coating over 10 sliding cycles, we can see very typical MOS2 behavior where the first cycle is uh, much higher uh, and the subsequent cycles are much lower and we get a nice run into a uh, steady state friction coefficient uh, after even just one cycle. So if we now take a look at the friction behavior of that raster patch that we made in dry nitrogen, uh, we can see that the raster region on cycle one shows a significantly different friction behavior than the as deposited coating. And if we look at the average friction of that raster patch over 10 sliding cycles, we can see that that first cycle uh, in, indeed is much lower than the as deposited, and that after even just one sliding cycle, we get a nice run in uh, to low friction that is a uh, much that is quite similar to the as deposited coating. So the key takeaway here is that a sheared region uh, is much lower friction than the than an as deposited coating, uh, as much here as uh, by 44%. Now that we have uh, tested the uh, MOS2 coating uh, before oxidation and steps one and two, as, as we had just showed. The next step is to uh, artificially or accelerate uh, the aging process, aging process of an MOS2 coating by heating up the sample at 250 50 degrees C uh, for 24 hours in lab air, and then subsequently uh, performing this similar test where we trace over the as deposit coating and raster coating that is now oxidized in dry nitrogen. So again, uh, pre-oxidation, the as deposited coating uh, shows very typical MOS2 behavior where the first cycle uh, is typically higher than the subsequent sliding, uh, sliding cycles uh, and we get this nice run into low friction. If we look at the uh, raster region again, uh, pre-oxidation, we see um, 
this uh, interesting behavior where the first cycle is much lower than the as deposited coding uh, and the subsequent sliding cycles um, uh, decrease uh, to a nice steady state friction coefficient uh, after about three cycles. Now, if we look at the uh, as deposited region post oxidation, what we see is that the uh, friction coefficient shown here in this uh, friction trace uh, dark, that's dark green, we can see a uh, much higher friction coefficient than the pre oxidation. And after uh, three sliding cycles, uh, we still haven't achieved that nice low friction coefficient that we saw uh, prior to oxidation. So if we look at the friction behavior of the raster region uh, post oxidation, we can see some really interesting behavior. Uh, one being that the initial friction on cycle one is significantly lower than the uh, uh, aged as deposited coating. Uh, and actually it's even lower than the uh, not aged as deposited coating on cycle one. Additionally, we're able to run into a low steady state uh, after even just one cycle. So the key takeaway here really is that sliding on a coating pre-oxidation reduces uh, the friction coefficient um, due to aging and allows us to return to that steady state friction much faster than an as deposited coating uh, and it, or even an aged as deposited coating. So, so to help us understand uh, kind of why these, uh, why mechanically sharing a coating helps this uh, resistance to aging, we uh, quantified the composition of the surface pre and post oxidation with XPS. And what we see is that uh, prior to oxidation, the as deposited coating um, uh, has uh, similar amounts of MOS2 and moly oxide. Uh, where the big difference occurs is uh, after aging, where the uh, as deposited coating, the top surface is almost completely moly oxide with very little MOS2, whereas the uh, aged uh, uh, raster region has uh, significantly more MOS2 and less moly oxide. So what we're really seeing here is that uh, after oxidation, the as deposited coating is pretty much fully oxidized, while the raster region run in dry nitrogen sees uh, much more MOS2, which helps us maintain that low coefficient of friction after oxidation. Uh, and if we look at um, uh, li uh, lice uh, depth profiling through the as deposited and the raster region, we can see that uh, oxygen has penetrated uh, not quite as deep, or there's less oxygen at similar depths than the as deposited coating. So the key takeaway here really is that um, sliding on MOS2, especially in dry nitrogen, decreases the amount of surface oxide um, uh, af uh, and maintains a lot of MOS2 after oxidation, uh, and that this basally oriented surface layer created due to sliding allows for less oxygen to penetrate into the bulk. So in conclusion, um, we, we have kind of shown in this talk that uh, sheared MOS2 or sliding on MOS2 coatings um, and uh, as deposited coatings uh, age or degrade over time much differently due to their uh, different surface morphologies. Uh, we showed that sheared regions have lower friction uh, pre and post oxidation than as deposited and that they can recover this low friction uh, to steady state much quicker. Uh, additionally, um, the uh, pendant we saw that the uh, uh, sheared regions maintain much more MOS2 on the surface and that the penetration of oxygen into the coating was mitigated by sliding on a coating pre-oxidation and that the key takeaway from this talk is that uh, operating component uh, in the lab uh, pre-storage or launch um, uh, is really beneficial for uh, retaining low friction uh, and increasing the performance of a coating, uh, which should really uh, help with uh, the overall performance when a MOS2 coating is actually uh, operated in the space environment. Lastly, I'd just like to acknowledge our funding sources, the National Science Foundation, uh, Professor Brandon Crick's um, career grant, and uh, my um, 
my funding for my PhD, the Graduate Research Fellowship Program, uh, and my lab mates, uh, Kylie Van Meter and Tomasz Graytak, along with Professor Brent Crick for supporting this work, uh, and everyone at uh, Sandia National Labs. Um, additionally, also uh, Stefan uh, Eder for uh, um, hosting this Vivimat 2021 uh, Materials work Tribology Workshop uh, and inviting uh, me to present. Thank you.